Good morning guys, Richie Richie. Today in this video, um, it's a part 4 uh, video on the uh, Nissan Skyline GTR uh, video. Um, so I've done like, I'm almost fully complete with this whole Skyline uh, video. So uh, I've done uh, the first generation, the second generation, the third generation, and the fourth generation. And now we're moving on to the fifth generation of the vehicle. So uh... I kind of forgot where I left off, so what I did is I looked back on my video and I uh, double checked of like where I was. It took a little bit of time, but uh, I managed to like find out where I was. Just because uh, I, I was busy and all that still. And uh, I was like just doing some gaming videos and all that. I had exams for uh, college and all that. And, uh, uh, I did pass uh, my exam, I passed my, speak and, my speaking and listening, and then I passed my math exam as well. So, uh, yeah, which is pretty good. So, uh, so right now, next step is probably GCSEs. I don't know, but uh, what I do know is that I'm doing well. And that's important. So, um, today uh, is, will be the fifth generation Skyline. So, uh, yeah, without any further ado, guys, let's get started. And also, I'm just growing a beard as well. <laughs> so, anyway, um, if you guys are into these kind of videos, make sure you, uh, like the video, like the video, subscribe, uh, comment below what you guys think, and, uh, hit the notification bell, hit all, so you're loaded when I make, like, all, like, new uploads and everything else and all that sort of stuff, and, like, you know, uh, communities, of, like, what I'm gonna be posting, uh, very soon. Which uh, I did do that like maybe a few weeks ago, I think I don't know, or maybe a month ago, uh, where I will be talking talking about the uh, eclipse from uh, the first Fast and Furious movie, and uh, I'll also be doing like three more Fast and Furious cars. And, uh, after that, I will be busy uh, uh, riding up another car that I another car that I got planned like, very soon. But uh, so uh, it's another Japanese car, it's a sports car, but. Uh, I'll give you guys a clue. It's with six cylinders. Um, uh, I want you guys to figure out for yourselves like what car you think I'm gonna be talking about. If you have an answer, uh, comment below of what car you think I'll be talking to you guys about in the video. I don't know. Like, I already know. It's just uh, I just want you guys to like figure out. Um, if you guys like, if you guys have your answers, just put them down in the, down in the comments below and. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you guys about like what car I'll be uh, talking to you guys about when I finish writing that up. I, I still got more to write up. Um, I'm like, let's say a quarter of it done, like 25%. So uh, uh, three quarters left to go, so like 75% left to go for the progress. And um, after that, I don't really know what I'll do as well after I've done uh, that car. Um, it's a tough one. It is really a tough one to solve. It's a solve, pretty much, you know. But, anyway, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll decide to let you guys find out. I will let you know in, like, maybe a few weeks or so what car I'll talk to you guys about. I don't know, but I'll find out. It is a bit cold, so, uh. So. Without any further ado, guys, let's get started. All right, so the fifth generation, the fifth generation Skyline, from 1999 to to 2000, yeah, from 1999 to 2002. So let's start with the overview first. So its production was from January 1999 to August 2002. Only 11,578 11, cars were produced. A designer was obviously Kozo Watanabe. Uh, next up is the body and chassis. Uh, body style is a two-door coupe or coupe. Uh, layout is a front engine all-wheel drive conversion. Powertrain next. So let's start with the engine. The engine is a two versions you can get. Is the first one is a 2.6 liter twin turbocharged RB26 DTT inline six, or if you want to have an upgrade, a 2.8 liter. Yeah, a 2.8 liter twin turbocharged RB26 DTT inline 6 but that's for the Z-Tune Skyline 
and that's like the most fastest uh, R34 Skyline in production. Uh, transmission is a Getrag 233 uh, 6 speed manual. Pretty good 6 speed cars. Dimensions is next. Um, uh, started with the uh, let's start with the wheelbase. Uh, it's 2,665 millimeters, 104.9 inches, almost 105 inches. Just close, by tenth of an inch. Length uh, 4,600 millimeters, 181.1 inches. Uh, width is next, uh, 1,785 millimeters, 70. Almost at 700 for a second. Uh, 70.3 inches. Height is next. Uh, 1,360 millimeters. 53 and a half inches. Yeah, 53.5. Same thing. Uh, curb weight is next. 3,439.2 pounds, which is 1,560 kilos. All right. So the GF BNR 34. Or the R34, if you can call it, a Skyline GTR, GTR V Spec, and GTR V Spec N1 models were introduced in January 1991. The R34 GTR was shorter from front to rear, uh, and the front overhang was reduced as compared to its predecessor, the R33. The, val the, valve the valve covers were painted glossy red, the color called this Cherry Red Effect Z24, or X1020 as opposed to black in previous models. A new feature on the R34 GTR is a 5.8 yeah, a new feature on the R34 is a 5.8 inch LCD MFD. MFD stands for multi multi multifunction display or multifunction display, same thing. Uh, on the center of the dash, which is like in like the middle, uh, which shows seven different live readings on of engine and vehicle statistics such as like you know turbocharger pressure uh, 1.2 bar max which is around 17.405 psi uh, yeah, around 17.17.4 psi um oil temp water temperature uh boost exhaust gas temperature Oil pressure, etc., etc. Uh, so yeah, turbocharger pressure, oil pressure, water temperature. So yeah, wait, 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 wait. Turbocharger pressure, oil temperature, water temperature. It might show like oil pressure, water pressure. I think. Uh, exhaust gas temperature boost. Fuel pressure, I think it would show. I don't know. Um, yeah, etc. etc. Uh, the, G the GTR V spec model added two extra features to the display the intake and exhaust gas temperatures, EGTs for short. Uh, Nismo multifunction displays, MFD uh, for short, uh, can be bought as an extra cost. They, include, they, included, uh, they included a lap timer, G force meter, and an increase in boost pressure measured. To two bar 29 psi of boost that's insane amounts of power well insane amounts of boost for a car like that two bar i want that in, like in my car one day like well i haven't got a car at the moment but uh i'm, I'm still doing my theory test but uh after i pass and like when i start to grow up i might be able to get like maybe a skyline or a supra or maybe a subaru or anything like that or even or even an evo or any or an or a toyota ae86 toreno you might recognize that car as, as the initial d vehicle so yeah um i don't know but uh i might like increase like the boost like you know like a bigger turbo onto it, blow off valve intake, intercooler exhaust, camshafts, cam gears, downpipe, ECU tunes, clutch, flywheel, etc. etc. Even the interior upgrades and brakes and suspension and tires. And that would be important. Yeah, so an increase in boost pressure measure measurement. Yeah, an increase in boost pressure measurement to two bar, which is yeah, 29 psi. Round that up is 30 psi boost. The R34 GTR was made shorter in response to customer concerns who thought the R30, the R30, uh, the R33 was too bulky. Like the R33, the new R34 
GTR V-Spec, which, which is short for uh, Victory Specification, that's what it stands for, uh, models came equipped with the Atessa ETS uh, Pro all-wheel drive system and an active LSD at the rear, while standard GTR models came with a non-pro system, which is like an open differential, and a conventional mechanical differential. Okay, is that like two diffs or something? I don't know. No, that would be weird. Like, only one car, like, every car has only got one diff. So, an active LSD and a conventional a mechanical differential. I don't know. I mean, that's what that's what they say. All right. Uh, the the V spec model also had firmer suspension and lower ground clearance thanks to front thanks to front and side splitters, as well as a rear carbon fiber air diffuser designed to keep air flowing smoothly under the via yeah, under the vehicle. So it's designed it's designed to keep air flowing smoothly under the car. Uh, at the time of the R34's introduction, like the R32 and R33, Nissan, introdu Nissan introduced an R31 V-Spec N1 model. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. No, no, I got that wrong. Wait, 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 the R34 V-Spec N1 model. Yeah, I think it was. It's just, uh, it took me like a long time to write out that and I was like tired after I finished all this. The R34 V-Spec N1 was equipped equipped similar to the R32 and R33 N1 models, a homologation special. Yeah, um, a homologation special. It was sold without air conditioning, audio equipment, rear wiper, or trunk lining, but ABS still remained. The new the new R32 ah oh god I can't even talk. Uh, the new R uh, the new R34 N1 was also given the new R34 N1 engine. Only 38 known R34 V-Spec N1 models were produced from the factory, 12 of which Nismo used for Super for Super Taiku Taiku uh, Racing. It's spelled T-A-I-K-U. No, 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 sorry, sorry, no, no, no. It's spelled T-A-I-K-Y-U. There we go. Taiku, Taiku, Taiku. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah, Super Taiku, I think, uh, racing. The rest were sold to various customers, mostly racing teams and tuning garages. So I would really would have my own businesses, like you know, having like a performance shop, and, like tuning garages and all that, and all that sort of stuff. And I'll fix on JDM cards. The V-Spec version was also imported into the UK with a number of modifications carried out on these 80 cards. These included three additional oil coolers, Revised DCU map, Phil Connolly uh, leather uh, interior, underbody underbody diffusers, stiffer suspension, active uh, rear limited slip differential, yeah, active rear limited slip differential, and extra an extra display feature on the in car display. In addition to the UK, ten were sold to Hong Kong and Singapore, and five to New Zealand, although with different changes for their respective markets. In October 2000, Nissan introduced uh, the V-Spec 2, replacing the original V-Spec 1. The V-Spec 2 uh, has increased, increased stiffness in the suspension, even stiffer than the original V-Spec, and has larger rear, rear brake rotors, or brake discs. Uh, it also came equipped with a carbon fiber hood or bonnet equipped with an NACA National uh, yeah, National Adversary Committee for Aeronautics duct, uh, which is lighter than the uh, uh, aluminum that all other GTR hoods are made from. It's weird, but oh uh, well. Also different on the V-Spec 2 was an iridium center console and aluminum pedals. The seats were upholstered with black cloth rather than the gray cloth used on previous R34 GTR models, and the amber turn lenses were turn blinkers, turn signals, what it's called, uh, were, were replaced with white versions. With the exception of the carbon fiber uh, hood, the standard trim level GTR also received these up these updates. Even talk properly. Uh, a total of 18 uh, V-Spec 2 and 1s were built. 
A total of 1,855 or 1,855 V-Spec 2s were built for Japan. Yeah, for Japan, with an additional two being sold for the for the New Zealand market. The V-Spec 2, uh, oh, well, not V-Spec 2, sorry. Uh, the V-Spec N1 was replaced with the V-Spec 2 N1. There we go. The same changes applied to the V-Spec N1 were applied to the V-Spec 2 N1 with the exception of the V-Spec 2 carbon hood which was now unpainted which means like it's not being painted like not being painted ah, not being painted at all there we go Came in, properly. in May 2001 the M-Spec was introduced not to be confused like it was BMW's M, uh, M Sport and all that but the M-Spec GTR was introduced so there's like different specs for the uh, Skyline GTRs it was based on the V-Spec 2 but had special ripple or ripple uh, control uh as they call it uh dampers uh revised suspension setup stiffer uh, rear sway bar and a leather interior with heated front seats the m on the m spec stood for mizuno who was the chief engineer of nissan the only other change was the removal of the carbon fiber hood which was replaced with the standard aluminum hood. In February 2002, Nissan launched a final production model of the R34 GTR called the Skyline GTR V-Spec 2 NER and the Skyline GTR M-Spec NER which were based on the V-Spec 2 and 1. The NER was named after the famous German Nürburgring racetrack where the Skyline was developed. In total, 1,003 units of the R34 GTR NER were produced. All right, 718 were V-Spec 2 NERs and 285 were M-Spec NERs. So if I add all that up, that will give me around, yeah, 1,003, fair. Uh, the NER model featured yeah, the NER model featured an improved RB26 DTT based on the N1 racing engine. The standard turbochargers were upgraded to larger versions with a slightly increase in boost, and the ceramic blades were replaced with steel with steel blades, like steel versions. This has increased lag, but the turbo's durability was improved while being able to handle a bigger boost increase. The V-Spec 2 NER is based on the regular V-Spec 2 model and the M-Spec NER was based on the regular M-Spec model. Other than the addition of the NER engine, the NER models, models also included a different, color of a different color of stitching on the interior trim as well as a speedometer reading up to 300 km an hour, which is 186 miles an hour. Uh, gold valve covers instead of red and a gold VIN plate instead of silver. Due to typical Japanese car industries at the time, the car was advertised as having 206 kilowatts, 280 PS, 276 horsepower, but it actually had over 246 kilowatts, 334 PS, and 330 horsepower when it left the factory. In 1999, during Nissan's testing season at the Nürburgring North at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, the car set an unofficial lap time of 7 minutes and 52 seconds around the track driven by Nissan's test driver Kazuo Shimizu. Yeah, Kazuo, Shim Kazuo Shimizu. Kazuo Shimizu. The car broke the Skyline GTR R33's record, which was the fastest production car around the track. Next up, we got the production figures. So, uh, so the first one is the GTR Series 1, 2,709 cars were produced. Next up is the V-Spec, 4,193, V-Spec N1, 38, V-Spec UK version, 81, V-Spec Hong Kong, 10, V-Spec uh, New Zealand, 5, V-Spec Singapore, 10, unknown, the Series 1 version, we don't know which one it is, uh, 20, uh, pre-production pre cars including GTR Series 1, V-Spec, and V-Spec N1, uh, GTR Series 2, 1268, uh, V-Spec 2, uh, 1855, V-Spec 2 NER, or the Nürburgring edition, uh, 718, V-Spec 2 N1, 18, V-Spec 2 New Zealand, 2, M-Spec 366, 
and uh, the M Spec Nur 285. Oh, and also the Nismo Z Tune was. They made 19 of those. But bear this in mind the Z Tune uh, were built. The Z Tune cards were built on used cards, which is why that number cannot be added to the total figure below. Speaking of the Z Tune, next, next is the Z Tune. So we're gonna talk about that now. So the Z Tune, or Z Tune, whatever you call it. Uh, Nismo, re uh, Nismo originally designed the concept of the Z Tune in 2002 when Nissan was putting an end to the R34 Skyline production. The first Z Tune was built in 2003 using a used 2002 Skyline GTR V Spec 2. It was built with a concept RB2060 TT Z1 engine. This engine was based on Nissan's Le Mans uh, GT2 and GT500 racing experiences, not to be confused with the Mustang GT500, as well as, as with the racing cars, a strength, a strengthened engine block and, yeah, a strengthened engine block and. Uh, a strengthened engine block and strokes crankshaft were utilized. The engine was also bored with a new displacement of 2.8 liters and upgraded turbochargers. The Z1 engine was rated at 368 kilowatts, 500 PS, and 400, 493 horsepower. That's close to 500 horsepower. That's amazing. Like, that's insane. And 6,800 RPM or 6,800 RPM and 398 pound feet of torque, well, 540 newton meters of torque at 5,200 RPM, 5,200 RPM. Uh, the Z Tune, the Z Tune had a zero to 100 kilometer an hour, zero to 60 mile an hour acceleration time of three point, yeah, 3.8 seconds, and had a top speed of over 327 kilometers an hour. 203 miles an hour. Nismo was then given the Nismo was then given the approval for ni yeah. Nismo was then given the appeal for Nissan. No, not appeal. Oh, why did I say this? Uh, Nismo was then given the approval. There we go from Nissan to build Z2 models for the Nismo anniversary. Nismo then purchased 18 used R34 GTR V specs. Each with less than twenty nine thousand kilometers, well eighteen thousand miles on the odometer, well mileometer as they would call it. They were then completely stripped and were resprayed to a Z Tune silver, a special color exclusively for the Z Tune. One car was left in its original color of midnight purple of midnight purple three. For each of the 18 production models, the 2.8 liter engine was revised to allow it to reach a speed of 8,000 RPM. The turbochargers were, supplies, were supplied by IHI, which is short for Ishikawara Jima Harima Heavy Industries in Japan. The engine is advertised to be able to generate range in 68 kilowatts, 500 PS, and 493 horsepower. I didn't write horsepower in there. For warranty reasons. Uh, this, so yeah, uh, yeah, horsepower. Uh, the second uh, re revision of the Z2 engine uh, is called the Z2. Yeah, yeah the second, this second revision revision of the Z2 engine is called the Z2. The bodywork is designed with the same functional components used in used in Nismo's uh, GT500 race cars, such as engine bay vents on the hood and bumpers and as well as wider arches for wider wheels. The Z2 is also improved with an aggressive suspension setup from from socks, not to be confused with like a clothing, it's spelled S-A-C-H-S, yeah, S. Yeah, S A C H S, and a specially uh, designed Brembo brake system. <sighs> Here we go. It's a bit better. So yeah, and a specially designed brake system. Yeah, Brembo brake system. Uh, the entire car is essentially hand handmade, with the car being completely stripped and rebuilt from the ground up. Yeah, from the ground up. 
Engineers reinforced uh, and stiffened uh, the chassis seam welding in key areas such as the door seams, door frames, uh, and added carbon fiber to strut to the strut tires, transmission tunnel, and engine bay, and completely redesigning the suspension, drivetrain, gearbox, and other uh, components so as to work at maximum efficiency and reliability, as is expected on a road-going car. Although Nismo planned, although Nismo planned on building 20 cars, uh, they ceased production on only 19 including two prototypes. Next is the replacement of the car. Following the end of the R34 production in 2002, Nissan announced they would separate the GTR model from the Skyline name, creating an entirely new car, though based on the same platform as the Skyline. This new car, now known simply as the Nissan GTR, debuted in 2007 in Tokyo. Introduced to consumers in 2008, it was the first GTR at available worldwide entering the North American market for the first time. The GTR uses the premium midship uh, PM platform, an evolution of the FM front midship platform, first used by the V35 generation of the Skyline. The R34 heritage is reflected in its chassis codes. So first one is CBA R35, which is from 2007 to 2011. Yeah, from 2007 to 2011. Uh, next is the D is the DB is the DBA R35 from 2012 to 2016, and the 4 BA R35 to from 2017 to present, or simply just the R35. Next up, we've got the power. Next up, we got the powertrain. The GTR of the 90s included a 2.6 liter straight six cylinder twin turbo engine producing 206 kilowatts, 280 PS, 276 horsepower. The standard turbochargers were of a hybrid steel, which is with like a, which is a ceramic design, allowing them to spool up faster due to the light nature of the ceramic exhaust wheel. The drivetrain delivered a uh, power to all four wheels using an electronically electronically controlled all-wheel drive system Nissan, Nissan called the Atessa ETS. Uh, this system used two accelerometers uh, mounted, under, uh, mounted under the center console which fed lateral and long, longitudinal inputs to, to the ECU, the electronic control unit. The ECU then controlled power delivery uh, to the front wheels uh, via an electronically, not electronically, but an electronic torque split converter. In 1995, the Atessa ETS Pro was introduced as an option for, R for R33 GTR customers and came as standard equipped in GTR V spec models. And yeah, GTR V spec models. It was later standard equipment in all GTR models for the R34 Skyline GTR. My dream GDM, my dream GDM car. The Atessa ETS Pro added an active LSD, which was controlled by the onboard Atessa computer. Yeah, by the onboard Atessa computer. This was only for the rear differential, as the front differential remained as a normal LSD. Yeah, this was only for the rear differential, as the front differential remained as a normal standard LSD. The Atessa ETS Pro was also advertised in brochures as adding an electronically controlled four channel yeah four channel ABS braking system. A four channel ABS braking system. Although it's not related to the all wheel drive system it uses much of the same sensors. Yeah although it's not related to the all wheel drive system it uses much of the same sensors as the same computer. Yeah and the same computer. The R32 could be switched from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive uh, by removing the four-wheel drive fuse. Yeah, four-wheel drive fuse, or just like removing the front drive, removing the front drive shaft. But R33 and R34 models had to have the front tail shaft removed, or drive shaft, as you can call it, or the center diff can be depressurized for towing mode, as specified in the owner's manual. The car also had the car also had a computer controlled all-wheel drive not all-wheel all drive all-wheel steering uh, system 
which is like a four wheel steering uh, system, referred to as HICUS, High Capacity Actively Controlled Steering. The HICUS system activated when the car exceeded 80, 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour, and controlled the steering of the rear wheels in the same direction as the front to improve turn in on entry to corners, so it can corner better. Uh, this feature is often seen seen as more of a of a hin of a hindrance than help in race application uh, in race applications. The system tends to favor less experienced experienced drivers and can make the and can make the rear suspension uh, unstable during high speed cornering. While the published figures from Nissan were as quoted above. Tests showed the car had a factory power output of closer to 243 kilowatts, 330 PS, 326 horsepower at the flywheel. The lower published figure was Nissan's response to the to the need to abide to abide by the gentleman's agreement between the Japanese auto the Japanese auto manufacturers not to introduce a car to the public exceeding 206 kilowatts, 280 PS, 276 horsepower of power output. Uh, next down, we got the N1 engines. The RB26 DTC N1 is an upgraded version of the standard RB26 DTC engine. Yeah, the RB26 DTC N1 is updated. Uh, updated. Not updated, sorry. Uh, upgraded version of the standard RB26. RB26 DTT engine. It was developed by Nissan's Kuki Rainiac division for Nismo and N1 race cars. Rainiac, Rainiac is spelled R R E I N I K. The standard RB20, the yeah, Rainiac division for Nismo and N1 race cars. The standard RB26 DTT, also known for its durability, powered to require too much maintenance for group and N1 class uh, racing conditions. Rainiac started with a strengthened RB26 DTZ block. The N1 block is identified by its 24U number stamped on the block versus the standard 05U blocks. The cylinder walls are thicker and water cooling channels are enhanced to increase flow. It also received an upgraded oil pump and water pump so it also receives a, both an upgraded oil and water pump to improve the cooling and lubrication for race conditions. The pistons have 1.2 mm, 0.047 inch top rings and were balanced before assembly but otherwise very close to standard. The connecting rods are similar to standard but made <coughs> from slightly stronger material and balanced. Um, so yeah, stronger material and balanced. Uh, standard crankshaft is balanced, yeah, balanced to a higher level. Higher flow exhaust manifolds are, and turbochargers were slight were added for increased torque and slightly higher top end power. Tur turbine wheels uh, on the N1 turbochargers are also made from steel for durability, rather than the lighter but weaker ceramic found on the st on the standard turbine. <coughs> the R32 DTR, the R32. The R32 Skyline GTR N1 road car marked the N1 engines. Yeah, the N1 engines introduced introduction for sale to the public. R32, R33, and R34 N1 road cars were known for lack of amenities. I don't know what's. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's spelled A M E A M E N I T I E S, and they're lightweight. Uh, <clears throat> the R33 N1 engine and turbochargers were slightly revised and the R34 N1 engine saw further improvement. The camshaft timing was altered slightly for more torque. R33 and R34 N1 turbos are the same size however are the same size. However, R34 N1s use a ball bearing center section. Nismo states the ball bearings in the R34 N1 allowed them to spool 400 RPMs, 400 RPMs faster than the R33 N1. The final N1 engine in the R34 N, in the R34 NUR engine. Wait, the final N1 engine is the R34 N, is the R34 NUR engine. The only differences are the cam cover color change. 
or the yeah, or the cam cover color change from red to gold. And the R34 Neuro Edition was a fully loaded streetcar. There were 1,000 Neuro engines made for use in the R34 V spec, yeah, R34 V spec two Neuro and R34 M spec Neuro, M spec Neuro models. All right, well, I'm recording 35 minutes. Jeez. So let's see how long, how much I got left. Okay, let's see. All right, so uh, we're almost done, by the way. So uh, I got a bit more info left. All right, I figured this will be it, guys. Um. So uh, if you guys like these kind of videos and you find them enjoyable, uh, useful, and all that, uh, let me know in the comments of what you guys uh, think about uh, this. So uh, yeah, if you guys are like, if you guys like these kind of videos and you find them useful and all that, and you uh, want to see more of them and all that, just uh, let me know down in the comments of what you want me. Of like what you would want me to like talk about like what car in law you would want me to talk about like American wise Asian Asian uh, say American Asian European even um, but uh so yeah so uh let's so that would be great I'll just write down what's gonna be for part five jeez it's crazy all right this will be it guys, so we're recording for like over over 30 minutes now, 36 minutes, so uh, almost 37 minutes, so yeah, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, if you guys like these videos, like them, subscribe, and put notification bell and hit all so you're literally when I make new uploads and all that, uh, leave a comment down below what you guys think, and um, so I managed to hit like over 100 videos, that's incredible, incredible, that's great. Pretty good, and um, I might be getting up to over forty thousand views. Yeah, over forty thousand views. I don't know how I managed to pull that off, but it was great, like the best. So um, yeah, uh, if it gets like over a hundred subscribers, it will make me such such a happy man. So yeah, um, but in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, so. I will like see you guys maybe next week or the week after. I don't know, but I'll, we'll find out. So yeah, um, so yeah, like the video, subscribe, comment below what you guys think. Notification bell, hit all so you're when I make a new upload. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. So until then, stay safe. Have a really, really great day for you guys. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a great day, and I'll see you guys soon. So take care. Bye bye.